Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to start the process of making uh, what I'm calling a very boozy Christmas cake. So this is going to have a lot of alcohol in it of different types but you could do it with um, fruit juice, pineapple juice, orange juice if you don't like uh, the taste of the alcohol. And I think you can also vary which alcohols you put in it basically so you don't have to go out and buy special bottles of alcohol just for uh, three tablespoons or something like that and it's based on a recipe for a creole christmas cake which i saw on delia smith's uh, website and i'm following that fairly closely but it, there are a couple of variations so i'm calling mine a boozy christmas cake simply because it has a lot of different alcohol in it and the process is uh, that you have to soak the fruit in the alcohol heat it you bring it to a simmer and then you allow it to simmer gently then you cool it down and you keep it in the fridge uh, for a number of days in the original recipe it said to do it for a week well i think i'll probably only do mine for about four days um, after that you then uh, make the cake batter and you stir all this soaked fruit into the cake so i'll go on to the ingredients just for the fruit and the, the the simmering and that's all we need today and I'm starting off with 450 grams which is a pound and it's about three cups of raisins then I have 227 grams which is half a pound of currants which is about one and a third cups then I have some prunes and it's 110 grams, which is two thirds of a cup of prunes chopped up. So it's two thirds of a cup once they've been chopped. That works out at three and a half ounces. It actually worked out at 11 prunes. I have 50 grams, half a cup of uh, chopped mixed nuts. And I'm using hazelnuts, walnuts and pecans. I have 50 grams, which worked out for me at eight um, Glacé cherries, again chopped up, and that works out at a quarter of a cup. I have one tablespoon of light brown sugar. I have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And I have some spices, which is half a teaspoon of nutmeg, which I grated just now. Um, so that doesn't look, that looks like more than half a teaspoon because it's not as finely packed. This is half a teaspoon of clove. This is half a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is half a teaspoon of salt. So half a teaspoon of each of those. And they're going to go into the mixture. And then for the alcohol, I have uh, some brandy and some rum, and then some cherry brandy, some Angostura bitters, and some port. And then I also have um, some water and what we're going to do is um, put all the, the ingredients into a saucepan. And I'm using a fairly small saucepan, um, but they should all go in. And these sticky ingredients will um, separate out once the um, liquid goes in. So that's all those ingredients, the dry ingredients plus the vanilla in. And I'm actually just going to Give that a little bit of a stir before I go any further and that's as much as anything to mix a bit of the spice around that's good enough and then into that I'm going to put my water three tablespoons of water which is 45 milliliters and then 45 milliliters of um, dark rum which again is three tablespoons one, two, three, three tablespoons 
of uh, brandy. One, two, and just about three there. Then three tablespoons of cherry brandy. One, two, three. So then three tablespoons of port. One, two, three. And then it's a tablespoon and a half of um, Angostura's bitters. Angostura bitters. And this is a tablespoon and a half measure. Sorry, this is half a tablespoon measure, so I need three of these. Take some getting out, this does. One of those. Two of those. Three of those. So that's everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that onto the heat and I'm going to uh, heat it up until it's simmering. And once it's simmering, and I'm going to stir it a few times as it comes up to a simmer. And once it's simmering, I'm going to turn the heat down so that it simmers on the gentlest possible heat for 15 minutes. And then I'll come back after 15 minutes just to tell you what we do next. So I simmered the uh, fruit and nut mixture in the alcohol for 15 minutes. And of course, the liquid absorbed into some of the fruit and uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it into this container. It's very hot of course. And most of the liquid has already absorbed, but what remains will absorb over the next few days. What I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to let that cool down completely. And once it's cooled completely, I'm going to um, put the lid on and I'm going to put it into the fridge and let it chill. And uh, every day I'm going to give it a shake or I actually may take the lid off and just give it a quick stir around a little bit. Um, and then put it back in the fridge and then after four or five days I will come back and we'll go on to make the cake. So it's five days later now and the fruit and the nuts uh, which have, were soaked in the alcohol have been in the fridge for that time and I've uh, given it a stir every day uh, just to make sure that uh, any liquid gets absorbed into all the fruit. So we're ready to go on to the next step and so uh, to start that I have uh, preheated my oven to 140 celsius that's 285 fahrenheit and I have greased and lined an 8 inch uh, square cake tin. So I'll go on to the ingredients for uh, the cake part of it um, and for that I have 250 grams, which is one and two thirds cups based on scooping packed flour out of a 250 milliliter cup, and that's plain or all purpose flour. I have three and a half teaspoons of baking powder, which I'm going to put into that flour now, and uh, then I will give it a stir around with a whisk just to get that mixed in. 
and I have 250 grams of uh, softened unsalted butter and mine's not quite as soft as I'd like it um, but it should be soft enough then I also have five large eggs that would be extra large in the USA now if you don't have large eggs I've calculated that you could use uh, six medium eggs which would then be large in the USA uh, and that would be about the same volume I have 250 grams which is two and a quarter cups of light brown sugar and then I have uh, some walnuts and some pecans which I'm going to put on the top of my cake before I bake it that's rather than uh, icing it afterwards I'm not going to ice this cake but you could do you could leave these nuts out and you could put a fondant icing on the top if you wanted to so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to cream the sugar and the butter in a large bowl if your butter was uh, very soft um, you could actually put all the ingredients into the bowl at the same time and simply mix them together but because some of my butter isn't completely soft I'm going to cream it with the sugar and then put the eggs and the flour in afterwards so the purpose of this creaming is really just to get the butter softened up to the consistency I want and I'm doing this with the hand mixer but you could do it with a, a wooden spoon if you wanted to so that's mixed in quite nicely the butter and the sugar so I'm going to add the eggs and I'm going to add them one at a time and mix those and if the batter seems to curdle it really doesn't matter because once the flour goes in it will all come together again so that's mixed in so then I'm going to put the flour in and I'm just going to mix that until it's all combined and I'll do that in a couple of additions so with that mixed in I'm just going to turn it over to make sure there's no flour on the bottom that hasn't been incorporated and then I'm going to take my fruit and nuts and alcohol and I'm going to fold those in um, a bit at a time you know I'm not going to do it all at once I want to get it make sure it's all evenly distributed but there's a lot of it and that looks quite well folded in so then what I'm going to do is to put that into my cake tin and I'm going to push that down and level it off
and I'm going to scrape the bowl and put the excess batter on the top because that can act as a bit of a bed for my nuts. And that's good enough like that. So then I'm going to um, just place the walnuts and pecans that I've got on the top. It doesn't have to be any particular pattern. So that's good enough like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for three hours at that 140 Celsius, 285 Fahrenheit. And after three hours, I'm going to take a double piece of parchment paper and I'm going to place it on top of the cake like that in the oven and I'm going to bake it for a further hour. And then it should be cooked. I, I'll try to test it with a skewer and test the internal temperature. I'll take it out of the oven and allow it to cool in the cake tin for 45 minutes to an hour. Then I turn it out onto a wire rack to allow it to cool completely. And once it's cooled completely, I'll come back and show you the results. So I baked uh, my boozy Christmas cake for three hours. Then I put the parchment paper on top and baked it for a further hour. And I took it out of the oven and I cooled it down in the tin for about 45, 50 minutes. Then I turned it out onto a wire rack and I've already cut it. So what I'll do here is I'll insert a picture so that you can see what it looked like um, on the wire rack before I cut it. And it baked very, very well, I have to say. And it was nice and springy to the touch uh, when I pressed it down. And I did take the temperature uh, internally and the temperature uh, was at the very top of the cake as the, uh, the probe went in was 96 Celsius. And as I pushed it down, it went, at, uh, went up to just about 100 Celsius, which I think is about 210 212 Fahrenheit uh, so it baked perfectly and I've now uh, I'll show you what it looks like cut so this is it and I've just cut it into some fairly hefty little chunks really so as you can see the fruit is fairly nicely distributed and uh, looks very very good so I'll have a taste of it It does taste very, very good. So rich and fruity. And that alcohol doesn't come 
through as a strong alcohol but it gives it flavour and I get the hit of the spices a little bit at the back of my throat as well. It's a, a really lovely cake I have to say and it's the sort of cake that if you wanted to feed it more alcohol uh, in the weeks before Christmas keep it wrapped up in aluminium foil and open it and prick some holes in it and put some uh, brandy in it if you want to. Personally I don't think it needs it um, but you can sort of wrap this up it will keep for a very long time as long as you've wrapped it well in aluminium foil and keep it in an airtight container it will stay fresh for months. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking.